For over a decade, most of this company's workers earn $7,000 a year less than the industry standard. I rise this evening to tell the Senate about the shameful treatment of a group of overworked, underappreciated and underpaid workers in my state of Victoria. Collectors working in one of the most important sectors of the health industry, pathology. A pathology company collects specimen samples, bloods, etc., for pathology testing for doctors and other medical professionals to determine what needs to be done. You have a rapport with your patients, especially when you're seeing the same patients on a regular basis, that you have a rapport for them and you know their, their health conditions, so you understand that their results are are important to the doctor. It's important to understand that these are skilled workers who perform work which is vitally important to public health in Victoria. Over 70% of all medical diagnoses in Victoria are based on the skill and expertise of Dorovich's workers. A company that had little to no regard towards their workers. Dorovich um, was what we referred to as a bottom feeder in the industry. This company had a long history of just completely ignoring the workers. We had employees who had not had a real wage increase for over a decade. And what was happening is that their really low wages and conditions that they were providing to their staff not only affected Dorovich workers, but had a knock-on effect to other um, pathology providers. The award is the minimum amount of money an employer is allowed to pay an Australian worker. But this company let some of its workers fall below those minimum payments. Instead of working your normal hours, there was always an extra quarter of an hour or so expected on you in the morning and at the afternoon when you finished. Lunch was near on impossible. Yet year after year, nothing was being done to help the pathologists who were living with 2018 bills, but only on a 2007 income. Until the Health Workers Union decided to take them on. We want a fair bloody go, don't we? Yes! What do we want? Fair yes. bloody go! Union! 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 These people have not had a pay rise, a genuine pay rise, for over 10 years. In that 10 years, Dyrich has made $1.2 billion. So you can understand why they're angry. They've had enough and they're fed up. I'm Sarah Landy, and today I'm going to take you on a journey through the biggest industrial battle ever taken by the Health Workers Union, the Dorovich Campaign. This is the power of belonging. In 2016, I was designated and allocated the task of specifically bringing the Dorovich workers' wages and conditions up to industry standards. Everybody, Ray Collins. Thanks, Diana. My name's Ray Collins. I'm an industrial organiser with the Health Workers Union in Melbourne, Victoria. Between 2007 and 2017, 18, they had given no wage increases and they'd refused to negotiate with the union that represented their workers about wages and conditions. Over half of our members were, were, were single parents or sing, single income families. If they put their head up and, and tried to stand up for themselves, they are in trouble. They would be given what's called disciplinary processes. And they would feel as if, if they, they were risking their job. I have been locked out from Dorovich Pathology indefinitely because I've chosen to stand up for my rights and the rights of my fellow colleagues. So they needed every dollar they could earn and they needed to not lose their jobs and they needed to pick up extra work if they could, which means they're totally dependent on 
their boss giving them work. The union secretary, Diana, was a phlebotomist, which is the person who takes bloods and other procedures for medicos. She had previously worked for Dorovich, so he had, she'd given me the task of saying, good luck with this. For 10 years, unions other than us and this union have been trying to get this company to actually come to the table and just have a chat or discuss or what we call bargain for wages. The union tried several times to reach an agreement to improve their working conditions. The company had deliberately stalled wages by delaying, bullying, intimidating or manipulating workers. Working for Dorovich was ever increasing, becoming, there were more demands placed on all the staff members. We could see that technology was changing, improving systems, but then staff were expected to do more and more, which was taking up more time. My name is Julie Linden. I used to work for Dorovich. I started in May 2000 and finished up in November 2018. It was constantly getting busier and busier. And as you understand in pathology, pathology is always needed. If I could say it politely, management is sitting in their office. They're working out, well, we have this amount of staff. We have this amount of vehicles. We have this amount of profit to come in. So we'll use our workers to the maximum. We'll push them to as hard as they can go. And yes, they, they were unrealistic goals. We're now becoming more aware of mental health issues. I think this type of work could contribute. Myself being mobile, it puts pressure on you to drive that little bit faster and take a few more little risks. So, you know, it, it, it does have an impact on health and safety as well. Notice that when you work more hours and you, such as like double the amount of hours, and then suddenly you've only got, say, $500 credited in the bank. What's happening? Dorovich has held back some of my money. So I don't know whether that had anything to do with the, the campaign as such, but there was a lot of, of, from speaking to other colleagues, it wasn't just happening to me. There was a lot of colleagues that had pay with withheld. And when you've got responsibilities, you've got certain deductions coming out of your bank, you need that money. CEO was getting a nice big healthy pay rise for sitting longer in his office. Um, new, new vehicles, management and coordinators, etc., had new vehicles. But no, the workers, the mobile collectors, no, they still continued to drive cars that were virtually unroadworthy. In fact, I think it was with the union's help, they were able to take a lot of the cars off the road and force the company to provide their mobile collectors and couriers with, with, with cars that were reasonable. Uh, the amount of kilometres the couriers' vehicles had as well, and the fact that they were, many of them were so unroadworthy, with bald tyres, uh, shock absorbers that weren't working, uh, brakes that, that would fail, Yes, I'm David Eden, uh, the Assistant Secretary of the Health Workers' Union. One of the cases was that um, the water hoses underneath the dashboards had uh, split and we were leaking uh, fluid onto the carpets. You think, oh, what's the danger in that? Well, uh, the wet carpets were actually growing black mould and those staff were driving around breathing in the spores of that black mould. So part of our um, uh, strategy, I suppose, was to go around with our occupational health and safety ARIA permits and our organisers uh, did assessments on the vehicles to see whether or not um, uh, they could be reasonably expected to be in roadworthy condition and we also looked at their service records as well and when they were last serviced. So these are little tiny vehicles that they were getting around in and many of them had over a half a million, half a million kilometres on their vehicles and the service records were patchy to say the least. So we were able to put a lot of their vehicles off the road as well and that wasn't sort of considered industrial action, that was just um, you know, a health and safety uh, nightmare. The HWU presented this to the Fair Work Commission. Not once did they put a pay rise offer on the table. Enough was enough. The Dorovich campaign was over two years in the making. Uh, what brought it about really was the fact that we were negotiating enterprise bargaining agreements with other uh, pathology providers in Victoria 
and uh, pathology in Victoria is uh, tender based and uh, while we had a few good pathology providers in Victoria they were being undercut by Dorovich pathology. Well we had to do a um, strengths and weakness analysis of the campaign before we started and we stripped it right back to basics and that was to work out um, what was the Achilles heel of not only Dorovich but the pathology industry as a whole and that was their reliance on old school technology, the fax systems and uh, what we did was set about a process of visiting uh, the different pathology providers uh, uh, websites and mapped uh, the entire industry. It was a really lengthy process to map the pathology sector, but if we didn't do the basics, this campaign wouldn't have been as successful as it was. And we started off with what was known as a Know Your Rights campaign, where we uh, told employees, uh, not just our members, but employees, because these faxes were going in cold, uh, what their uh, rights were under their enterprise bargaining agreement. Uh, we also did a strength and weakness uh, analysis on the uh, company and uh, what we found was uh, the CEO, the then CEO, uh, Neville Moller, had one play in his game book and that was uh, to stand any uh, uh, members down if they took industrial action. So with that um, knowledge, we used that as not a weakness, but a strength. And a lot of uh, our planning moving forward was to use uh, his personality traits and also his usual game play. We knew that Dorovich Pathology would have had some uh, spies join up uh, the union, uh, some inside people if you like, and we wanted to exploit that as well as an opportunity or a strength in our campaign. So we believe once we sent that pack out to all of our members across Victoria, the CEO Neville Moller would have had that pack. So what we did, which we have to do under the Industrial Relations Act, is that we notified the employer that stage one bans were going to commence. We didn't tell the members that stage one bans were on. We then notified Dorovich Pathology that stage two bans were going on. So once again, they sent their supervisors out scouting around the state of Victoria to report back to the head office about how many sites uh, were going to be taking industrial action. And once again, the report back to head office was nothing's happening. So they've called our bluff. What we did is then notify Dorovich Pathology that we're going to take stage three bans. We're going on strike as of this particular day at this particular time. And we sent an SMS out to our membership at around 7.30 in the morning before they started to work saying don't turn up today. We, we didn't have a, a great number of union members. We had uh, not a lot, we had under 100. It wasn't a lot for a company that had a couple of thousand um, employees. We decided to knock on every workplace door in the organisation and talk to every single worker who worked at the company. Now what we had to do was a, known as a majority support determination where we got employees at Dorovich to sign a paper that told the Fair Work Commission that they wanted to negotiate a new enterprise agreement. Uh, my name is Cam Cameron Granger, I'm an industrial officer with the Health Workers Union. During the Dorovich campaign I was an organiser based in Bendigo. Look, we knew it was always going to be a big effort to get the Dorovich campaign up and running. Um, we'd spent about two years getting it to the stage where we felt comfortable that members understood what was going on and would support us. Uh, so we, we knew it would happen, we knew it would work. What I was surprised at is how quickly it worked um, and how well people stuck together right across Victoria. Um, I think in one week I did something like 1,500 kilometres uh, and the members really did hold together. A lot of them, if it wasn't for themselves, they were making sure that they stuck out through the course of the, of the industrial action to help those who could least afford not to have the pay increase. So those young parents who needed the money more than anybody, uh, the rest of the Dorovich workers sort of stuck together as a community to make sure that they got what they deserved. We also discovered through press and common uh, public documents, they had, a, they had a, a major shareholder. There was a major company, a Chinese owned company, 
who was a major shareholder of the parent company. So what this union did was we marched upon the registered office of the, of the um, major shareholder, which was an overseas Chinese company here in Melbourne. Uh, we occupied their offices until we were asked to leave peacefully by the Victoria Police, where we, we left immediately when we marched upon the offices. That's an unusual tactic for a union to take, to go to a, to a major shareholder within a public company that owns a dodgy company, not looking after their workers. And we, we were pretty happy about that because it got an appropriate amount of publicity. Right in the middle of this campaign, when things looked like it couldn't get any worse, Dorovich tried to patch things up by sending every employee a gingerbread man. Since the previous end of year, the chief executive officer sent every Dorovich employee a gingerbread man, saying thank you very much for your efforts. We have cookies everybody, where are the cookies? Dorovich, being a particularly bad employer, um, didn't understand exactly how their workforce was feeling. Which the Dorovich employees were not happy about. They wanted a pay increase or reasonable working conditions. Uh, as if to say, this will make up for 10 years without a decent pay increase. And, and it obviously, it just infuriated members. Uh, it, it made them more angry at, at a company that had already done them. Um, a, a lot of damage, so uh, it really it was a failed effort by, by Dorovich and anyone could have told them that that was a stupid move. So when we um, marched down Banksia Street, and down the main road there in Heidelberg, many, many of the Dorovich employees bought their gingerbread men and they all put them on the front doorstep of the corporate headquarters of Dorovich and trampled on them. Thank you for the cookies, Mr Neville, but that's not going to help at all. This is the same employer who, after the rally, advertised on seek.com for people to replace this long-standing workforce. Why did they do this unlawful act? Well, he did it because in his own, this is the CEO's own words, he believed that these employees could be replaced by, quote, trained monkeys. Unashamedly responsible for the working wages and conditions of his employees. And he was very proud of it and used to boast about it. And I can remember once there was an incident, or not an incident, there was an issue where I went to the workplace under my rights to see the workers there and discuss their issues. And he intervened, he tried to walk in on the meeting and put in a security guard to stand next to me, to stop me from talking and communicating with the workers. They're not allowed to do that. So I approached him, quoted him the Fair Work Act that he was out, you know, it was outside what's supposed to happen. Union meetings are confidential, not meant to have security guards watching over a union official. Well, he can't stay here. He can't stay here. It's a violation of the Fair Work Act. His behaviour was appalling. He basically engaged with me in a manner that I don't think was appropriate for a CEO of such a large company and basically told me to suck it up when I said to him that, you know, things weren't right. <laughs> He's not under the fair work act, he can't stay in the In a, what I thought was a pretty engaging voice and body language, he was terrible. 89 Dorovich workers were not allowed to return to work until the union withdrew its industrial campaign. I have been locked out from Dorovich pathology indefinitely because I've chosen to stand up for my rights and the rights of my fellow colleagues. I'm a single mother, I have a mortgage, but I'm happy to go without pay until Dorovich Pathology come to the table and say, you deserve more than you're getting, you deserve an EBA, and we will give it to you eventually. How did they pick the 89 people? How did they target them? 
but probably 80, 90% of those 89 workers were single mothers with young children. So even though we weren't taking a strike action and the members wanted to go back to work to earn money, the company was saying, no, you can't go back to work. That really um, made people angry. On August 7, 2017, over 600 HWU members went on strike. All over Victoria, pathology collection centres shut. Single mums struggled to feed their kids or pay their bills. The lockout backfired. The mantra of touch one, touch all came to the fore. One out, it's all out. Yes. And further than that, it's legal and we will do it instantaneously. We will walk out of the hospital, we will walk out of the medical centres, we will walk out of the collection centres, we will stop the relievers going into the aged care facilities. If they lock one of our members out, it's one out, it's all out. A health union, which our motto is caring, for the caregivers, that's our motto. We care for the caregivers. We don't take industrial action lightly. The following day, the other 511 HWU members went on strike for a week. Dorovich scrambled to stay operational. Exhausted, non-union members were shuffled around the state to keep centres open. We knew that Dorovich Pathology had a really high density of collection centres and public sector hospital contracts across Gippsland. So they got um, uh, particular attention uh, from our, uh, our union and multiple visits down there, including I made a couple of visits down through that way myself, and we made sure that we had a really high membership density for that region. So when we did go on strike, Gippsland was uh, essentially completely abandoned by uh, any Dorovich collection uh, uh, employee. So after today, let's hope somebody comes with a reasonable sort of mind and speaks to us. So everyone here, good luck to you all. The House Workers Union is here to stand beside you and will defend you and fight for you all the way through. Thank you everyone for coming in for the fight. The outcome. The Fair Work Commission determined a pay increase to Dorovich workers of up to 20%, allowance increases of up to 30% and back pay. Throughout this campaign, the HWU has worked tirelessly to secure overtime provisions, additional annual leave entitlement, strengthen dispute resolution processes and manage to extend paid parental leave rights, just to name a few of their achievements. I must admit, personally, I was cock a hoop. I had a drink of alcohol that night when we got the decision, several, because this was a commission of a full bench that was stacked against us. Really, we should, we, we, we got a decision which was just true and fair. On top of the pay increases, the HW successfully fought to protect Dorovich workers' sick leave, rostered off public holiday benefits, accident makeup pay and pro-rata long service on redundancy, which has all been confirmed. And, and it was a high decision, high rates of pay, high back pay, improved terms and conditions that were finally justified. But of course, none of this uh, could have been done without the support and determination of the HWU yeah. and the countless hours of the campaign led by these great unions organisers. And I want to congratulate a few of them today because they deserve to be acknowledged for the hard work they've done. First to the wonderful Diana Asmar for her vision and leadership. Yeah. To David uh, Eder, the Assistant HW Secretary, because his tireless efforts in, in directing this campaign. And to the mighty Ray Collins, the uh, HW's industrial organiser, who managed to quadruple the union's membership across 350 sites. So the next thing that happened, of course, um, our union membership just grew. People continued. People that are conservative, people, as I said earlier, who don't generally like unions, they joined, they joined en masse, and they got their friends to join. And you know what? They're still union members.